Welcome back, friends, to my channel. I'm going to talk a little bit about the sun here. I'm not going to try to cover every single quality of the sun because that would take, you know, like a whole day probably to do. So this is just some of the little tidbits that I like to add in that aren't always added when you read about the sun in astrology books. But of course, you know, you're going to going to want to read some of the basic introductory astrology books to understand what the sun has to do with fully. Uh, but I just I wrote some notes down here of some fun things that relate to the sun. So you probably already know that the sun rules the sign Leo, the lion, the sign of the king and the kingdom, and the sun therefore has to do with kings. And the sun is always up in the heavens, you know, lighting up the kingdom and running the world and creating the seasons and everything creating life on earth as we know it. And so that, the way that life works on earth, the reason it's hot and humid right now in summertime in the time of cancer in the Varsha, the rainy season, and just rain this morning, the reason for that is because of the sun and the earth's ongoing relationship, their ongoing dance through space and time. But uh, yeah, the cool, one of the really cool things about the sun is that the sun is said to be Sarvatman or Sarvatman, it's uh, Sarva means the like everything, like universe, all, and then Atman means soul, so it's the soul of the universe, the soul of everything, the soul of all that is. So that's that's really cool. That's how the sun works. Um, where your sun's at in your chart is how the universal soul of life is gonna work through you and gonna flow through you. So if your son is an Aries, then you're just an actor, a doer. You know, you want to do things. You want to, you have a kingdom you want to create. Um, you're impulsive and action-oriented. But then someone born with the son in Cancer will be a little bit more maybe intuitive or introverted or emotional focused or something they're not in just about acting in the world there's something mental going on there or emotional um, so this is actually also the reason why sun signs can be valid and can have some validity although they are not what they claim to be and so for the beginners who are watching this channel your sun sign is not your thing it's not all there is to astrology um, my sun sign is Aquarius, and yes, I identify with Aquarian traits, and there are a lot of those stereotypes of the Aquarius that run true for me, but not, not as the end-all thing. They're just kind of a general theme, and that is an entire month of time, 30 days that the sun spent in Aquarius. And so all the babies born within that whole 30-day period, they're not going to be all like me or all exactly Aquarian. Um, chances are if you identify with your sun sign, it is because there are other things going on with that sign in your chart making you identify with it extra. So like... When I meet girls and the girls that, that I talk to that are into astrology and they're like, oh, well, I'm a Taurus or something, that's really, when I look at their chart, I'm like, oh, you identify with Taurus not because of the sun sign, but because your ruling planet is in Taurus and it's your Atmakarika or something like that. Um, that. That's when we get into more the real astrology. Uh, we see it, oh, okay, like there are many different factors going on and all these things are pointing to Taurus. Now we see why you really identify with the qualities of Taurus. So for me, um, I, I identify with the qualities of Aquarius more than the average person, but that was because it turned out that there were other factors going on that made me more Aquarian than the average Aquarius. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> um, so, Sun sign is just one factor amongst many. It's not the end of the end of the day. It's not the end all thing. The moon sign changes every two days, so it's much more specific than the 30 day period of the sun. But even more important than that is the rising sign, the lagna, which changes every two hours. That's the real sign that is you that the astrologer is going to work off of. Um, 
But Sun's sign still will have some validity, some vague truth to it. That's because it's your higher self, your soul, your soul nature that you identify with. But that's not necessarily going to be your whole life. Um, and, you know, how often do people actually uh, live the path of their soul? And how many people are really identified with their soul or nature? So that's sort of a whole other factor of it. So, Sun is the Sarvatman, soul of the universe. And you know, the Sun is also described as Sattvic. It's one of the Sattvic planets. And so it has to do with our, our soul nature and our inspiration and feeling inspiration come through us and acting upon that. And that's what a good Sun is supposed to do for us just like what a good king is supposed to do for his nation. Sort of intuitively know the right thing to do and to do it, even if it means hurting himself. And, you know, even if it means something that is scary. Doing the selfless act. This is a really funny one. The sun is said to be square in shape. And the sun is the most masculine force um, in the zodiac, it rules. It's the only planet that rules only a male sign, so it's the most masculine and male force, just like how the moon is the most feminine force, because it only rules a female sign. And this is so neat because men are thought to be more attractive if they have more angular angles to their face and like more angular jaws and things like that, um, and like their chest is more square and angular and stuff. That's that's a an attractive quality that women find attractive. Why is that? I just think it's funny because the sun, here is the sun being described by Parashara <clears throat> in an ancient medieval Indian text, the sun is described as square in shape. And that's because the sun's about the foundation and the structure of things. It's the first planet, the number one planet. Everything else comes from it. So it's the foundation, the soul, our core of ourself. Um, it therefore follows that the sun is focused on structure and being firm and consistent. And that's why, you know, the sun makes the seasons. The moon is like full one minute, empty the next. It wanders along the ecliptic. Sun doesn't, isn't like that. It just stays the course and you can set your watch to it. And that's also what like is really appreciated oftentimes in relationships with the man or the male polarity in the relationship. They need to be able to do things and to be reliable, dependable for the woman or the mate or it doesn't always go that well so men you know men with more of an angular jaw maybe there is a subconscious thing in women that think "Ooh, okay he's firm he's dependable you know I can rely on him and that's a, something that we appreciate in a man for those who like men um, it's also neat because uh, some cultures are more lunar and yin and more curvy and round and then other cultures are more solar and straight and angular and square and that's that's because of this so likewise when I talk about the moon the moon is round in shape the opposite of being square and angular in shape so cultures that are really square and angular in the way that they do things are more solar cultures so like one is uh, like the German culture um, German culture is very just square, like the way that they design their cars even are more angular and square and not curvy shaped like other car companies. Um, they, even the way that they make their leather, I worked in a leather shop in the past and um, the German leather would be much more like square and angular um, structure and designs to it, um, which is less common for women's purses because women like curves on their handbags and they don't like it to be so rigid. They like it to fit their body and form and fit. And that's very lunar and yin and it makes sense because women are more lunar. So I noticed that when we would carry German leather goods, that sort of stood out a little bit more. Um, German culture is more like industrious and hardworking and consistent and um, just kind of not so focused on emotions and, and feelings, you know what I mean? It's more about actions and being driven. Um, so it's very solar and being efficient, things like that. Western culture is also very ambitious. Um, Western culture is very, very much about your, like, what you're doing and your status and the kingdom you're running and everything. And people don't ask you, oh, um, 
where's your family or what family are you from or where, where did you come from? They ask you, what do you do for a living when they meet you? Um, and I don't really, I've always just wondered why that, why people ask that. Um, yeah, so the sun is really all about structure and foundation. And in the same way, within the body systems on a medical level, with medical astrology, the sun rules the skeletal system. It rules the asti tissue, the bone tissue in Ayurveda. Um, so if you have bone issues, you often notice that the sun is not strong in the chart. If you've broken a lot of bones, that's usually if the sun is weak. The sun's afflicted or debilitated or starved by Venus or Saturn um, or with Rahu. These can make it more common to break your bones. Um, you can also find that the immune system relates to the sun because the sun rules the skeletal system and the bones and the overall structure of the body, also posture. If someone has a good, strong sun, they're likely to have good posture, which is also more attractive, people think, or typically women find more attractive. And if someone, also a good Saturn can give one good posture too, though, just to be clear. Um, but yeah, so if someone slouches a lot, that can be a weak sun or a weak Saturn, or both, you know? Um, so that's, that's kind of a really neat thing, how this even applies to medical astrology and in our bodies and how our bodies run. So a stronger sun will have a stronger uh, skeletal system and a stronger foundation for that and therefore have a stronger immune system and Agni and overall vitality and Tejas as well because your immune system is connected to your bones. Your bones are the storehouse of your minerals. And so when you get, when you're going to get sick and then, oh man, my body needs a bunch of calcium and magnesium, it has to leach that stuff out of the bone tissue where it stores it and has to leach it out of there and put it into the blood to heal other issues and to keep the body running. And so the bones are like the storehouse of our mineral reserves. And so another thing about having a strong sun means you'll have strong mineral deposits. You know, you'll have a strong mineral reserve, essentially. And you'll have a more of a stronger reserve of the different base elements that your body needs. Um, and that also, that doesn't essentially mean you have better Agni, but it usually does. It usually relates to having better fire and keeping the fire going. And the sun is related to the fire and the Agni. Um, having a stronger digestive system, having stronger fire, metabolism, these are all things that are correlated to having a stronger sun. In fact, people that eat a lot of meat, people that have really strong suns tend to crave eating tons of meat because they can burn off the toxins more efficiently than the average person. So they don't feel so held back by it. But what's interesting is when you get a strong sun person, if you can get them into eating raw food and being healthy and like a vegetarian diet, even vegan, if they can, those people become like superheroes. They become like supermen. Like these, like it's un, kind of un, unbelievable how strong and healthy and vital those people become. But it's rare, um, and we all like to eat good food, and <clears throat> so typically one doesn't get to that stage. But <clears throat> maybe some of the people that are watching this video are solar people who have a strong sun and have gotten into health, wellness, <clears throat> things like that, and have made me noticed. But if you have a strong sun, you should give it, give um, more raw foods a chance because the sun is like, gives one a more of a pitta type quality, a fiery quality. And they do very well with eating basically mostly raw cooling vegetables, um, especially in the summertime like it is now. So yeah, the sun can influence our health. It can influence a lot of different things. Um, the sun is said to be of little hair. And that's a really neat one, too. Um, Parashara describes the sun as being of little hair, not having a lot of hair. Um, and again, it's funny because studies have shown in modern day times that people who 
have a lot of testosterone, like an, an excessive amount of testosterone going through the body, they tend to go bald quicker. And testosterone is like the masculine chemical that makes you driven. So if you're more of that, you're more driven, you're more solar, and so then your hair is going to burn out. And they say they talk about this too in Ayurveda because they say that Pitta people tend to burn out the hair quickest. They burn out their fire. And Pitta people is essentially saying solar people. All right, so... Um, Oh, and you know, you see this in Western culture a lot. It's really unfortunate, um, and this would require other videos to go into, but it's really unfortunate how bad we neglect our health here in the, in the West, in America. And you constantly see older men jogging or running or cycling, like in the middle of the day, in the pits of time of the day, cycling, and their hair's going bald, and their body's like got all these horrible like growths and moles and warts and things all over it which are indications of toxins in the body because the skin is the the secondary detoxifying um, organ along with the kidneys and urine urine and using the bathroom and all that way all that stuff you sweat that's the other way you get toxins out so having bad skin means you need to do a, t a detox diet um, essentially and so they'll have really bad skin they'll be really red they'll be inflamed they'll have all these saggy bags in their eyes, all these bad features, and their hair will be burned up, um, and they're out running. They're out running, thinking that's what they need to do to stay in shape, and that's the exact opposite. They need to take a nap. They need to sleep in for once in their freaking decade. They need to go get a massage. They need to go get a sauna. They need to eat good food. They need to relax. They need to lay down but not in the sun and try to get a tan because that's what they think they need to have in the middle of the summer no like in the shade take, take a nap in the shade in the breeze essentially uh, a lot of people just don't know how to live in the western culture and they really need how to live advice and when people get readings from me constantly that's like the first thing I need to tell them before I even go into the more complicated stuff um, you know, how can I even help someone with their relationships when they're eating sugar every day and their minds just, a zo they just have a zombie mind because they're eating sugar because sugar ruins your mind. Um, not natural sugars, but just refine any kind of external sugar you drop on, even if it's organic. It's going to ruin your mind over time. Um, so there's a lot of things like that that um, are symptoms of a lot of issues in Western culture, but you can see this excessive solar influence connecting to... Um, connecting to men especially in the West but all people in the West so women have some of these symptoms as well um, but especially with older men during their son Dasha which is the period from 50 to 72 or so um, that's your natural son time in your life and that's that's a time when people want to create their kingdom and it takes that much time often to create your kingdom and your legacy and everything um, but sometimes these men need to be advised on in more wise ways of how to manage the kingdom and maintain it because men typically really solar men typically think just act more just work more just hit it harder <laughs> you know um, that's a very masculine approach when there are other ways to go about it If you have a strong moon especially if it's aspecting that Sun like on a full moon then you're lucky as a man because typically your emotions, your lunar side, will, you'll be able to check in with your emotions and think, huh, maybe I shouldn't just keep trying to power through everything all the time, always, until I'm exhausted and then trying to power through exhaustion by with more coffee or something, you know? Maybe I should try something else. Maybe I should go see an astrologer about this. Or maybe I should go see an Ayurvedic practitioner about this. Or maybe I should go get a massage or go to a sauna, you know? So... Hopefully, hopefully you guys have some good lunar influences going on, too, if you have the strong solar influence that I'm describing. Um, yeah, so if, uh, if you have any questions about this, let me know. If you have any other topics for other videos, let me know. If you like this, leave a like, subscribe, whatever, yada, yada, yada. Thanks, y'all. Bye.